How's it going everyone? My name is Graham and welcome to Two Left Thumbs. This is Please Go Play, the series where I recommend games that I think you should be playing. These videos are basically reviews, but rather than giving the game a rating at the end, I'll instead let you know up top that I fully endorse this game. This time around, I want to state that while I really do enjoy playing the game in its current state, I think the real plus here is the solo dev's dedication to making an enjoyable experience. Based on their work ethic and commitment to improving the game in every way over these last few months, I am also somewhat promoting the game based on its clear future potential. If the game were dry dropped tomorrow, it would still be a fully functioning, very fun game. But in the last six months, I've seen it go from good to great. And here's why I think you'll love it. Space Gladiators Escaping Tataris is a new game worked on full-time by solo newcomer Thomas Gervrod. This is a hop and bop roguelike platformer where you bash your way through the alien planet of Tataris as a gladiator. You'll have to fight through enemies, dodge traps and obstacles, select your path before eventually choosing your opponents in different arenas of this space gauntlet. You start with a handful of randomized weapons to bring you up from useless to at least standing a chance, but you've still got a long way to go. These starting weapons help keep runs fresh and gets the action going immediately. If you're stuck dying and restarting quite early and repeatedly, at least you'll instantly have something new to play around with and switch things up. Throughout a run, you can collect passive and active items that boost a wild amount of stats, as well as providing new means of attacking enemies and protecting yourself. Currently, the game has 240 unique items, including pets, weapons, and trinkets. Seriously, the stats in this game are nuts. There are so many small considerations and trade-offs to make, it can seem overwhelming and a bit like too much to keep track of, but you can adjust pretty quickly, and the stats menu has descriptions of each if you need a little reminder on the fly. Something that helps out, and unlike most other rogue games, item rooms always come with a choice, letting you really shape each run in a way that best suits your playstyle. It leaves a lot of room to experiment. Extra health or strength may seem like the obvious choice, do a little extra damage, stay alive a little longer, or you can start building synergies. Specific items will amplify if you have high technology, so you might want to lean really hard into that. And while this item pool is already massive, it's expanded upon further with the potential for each item to come with a few random modifiers RPG style. So even if you find a duplicate item, it might still be worth swapping in favor of a few new stats. So each and every drop always comes with its own exciting potential. If I were to give the shortest possible summary of how this game looks and feels, its style and mechanics, it's kind of like the behemoth made Dead Cells. It's not quite as fast or free-flowing as Dead Cells, but honestly any game I've played that tries to imitate Dead Cells always comes up short. Space Space Gladiators pulls from other games as well. I've found that it shares a sense of stat progression and room by room hesitation and vulnerability within individual runs in a way that feels more similar to The Binding of Isaac. Also from that game, beyond just starting a run feeling weak and layering it on from there, they also borrowed the system of having a buttload of achievements and each one is tied to a new unlock in the game. I really like that system, so I have no complaints of them lifting it for Space Gladiators. And while the game is obviously borrowing the odd thing here and there, it's never a direct clone. It's always tweaked to better fit this game and world. Simple additions, like the importance of deflecting projectiles, add much needed depth to the combat and how you approach each encounter. I've seen people in other reviews commonly compare this to Hollow Knight, which makes sense with a underworld-themed platformer of any sort, but it really comes across in how some of the background art is lit and shaded. I get the comparison, but I think Space Gladiators still brings an overall unique aesthetic, only borrowing bits and pieces. Same as the gameplay, it's adapted into something new, and most of those comparisons come pre-January, at which time there was a major overhaul to the backgrounds and some of the enemies that upped the overall contrast, quality, and distinctness of the art. In general, I'm a sucker for hand-drawn art. I have nothing against pixels, and even though it's another thing it has in common with Hollow Knight, it's nice to see another developer go that route and pull it off in a way that avoids feeling derivative. There are six different characters that all have unique playstyles and varying levels of weirdness. 
like this literal potato. Or a worm that runs around in a diaper and headbutts things. Yeah. Anyways, the progression in this game does lean more to rogue light. Each one of these characters will independently earn experience and level up the more you play. The game is pretty unforgiving, so having some means to permanently upgrade really make a big difference in helping you push forward through this arena. I think the difficulty curve here is really well thought out, ensuring that your characters grow and improve alongside you, providing that extra push to make it that little bit further in the next run. It will feel really brutal at first, but stick with it for a few runs and I promise you'll get the feel for it. Those little unlocks and boosts along the way make a big difference. Now I've compared the platforming to Hollow Knight and the gameplay to Dead Cells, and while it doesn't quite feel exactly like either of them, I do want to state the controls here are very tight and responsive. That's crucial for a game like this. I obviously still struggle now and again, but I never feel cheated by the actual controls or inputs. It's just part of the learning process. Something I don't think I've seen done in games of this genre before is locked in room choices. How you move through the different rooms and navigate the map used to be a gripe I had with this game, but it was reworked a long time ago into something really intriguing. When starting a new area, you see a complete layout of each zone of the map, clearly indicating which rooms are directly connected and informing you what each room holds. You know at a glance what the difficulty of each room will be, that clarity of difficulty with some random event potential and trap rooms all help you plan your intended path through the planet. The catch here is that there is no backtracking. It's like the maps of Slay the Spire. You have all the information you need to make those choices, but once you do, there's no going back. You need to weigh the risk and reward the whole way through. Low on health? Maybe avoid the red rooms and slip past some challenges. But you might notice you're now short on gold, and possibly with worse gear. High risk, high reward. The overall difficulty of the game, and the variety of rooms, means that even when you know generally what's in store, you're still risking everything with each new room. Maybe it's that particular set of traps you haven't quite mastered yet, and you're guaranteed to take a few hits. Building off the same principle, at the end of each series of rooms, you also have an arena fight. I really love the sense of gladiatorial combat here, as you can see the audience cheering you on. You'll notice these guys scattered throughout the map as well, which is a fun extra little detail that breathes life into the world. Prior to each of these arena fights, you get to cater the difficulty to your current confidence. You can see precisely what you'll be up against and what the reward for that would be. Those sick arena organizers really want to see you sweat. And at the end of each set of three levels, you complete a zone and fight a boss. I'll be honest, I haven't seen all the bosses yet. They tend to be pretty tricky. In this one in particular, I was lucky enough to have the axe that could heal me, or I would have died 10 times over. This is a part of the game I still struggle at, but have absolutely seen myself improving in. Now, I don't want it to sound like the game is entirely based around these choices and predetermined rooms and events. There is still plenty of randomization. Encounters, events, challenges, and hidden paths. We wouldn't want things to become too comfortable now, would we? Personally, I've never found any of the randomness to be so dramatic or unfair that it becomes run-ending. More than anything, these events are usually comedic and mostly work to keep things fresh and make this crazy world feel a little more fleshed out. I find the music in the game to be rather enjoyable, if not leaning a tad more to serviceable. It fits the game really well, and it has a fun blend of what you would want from dungeoneering and sci-fi, but I don't find the tracks stand out enough for me to want to invest in a lone soundtrack. The soundtrack definitely adds to the game, I just don't know if it works independent of the game, which might not be important to most people. But the squishy, squelchy, homemade sound design goes a long way in adding to the satisfaction of bashing these disgusting alien creatures. The sounds and foley work here are so rich and over the top. Now and again, a sound effect or alien noise will be so silly and above and beyond that I've actually laughed out loud. yet it somehow never feels out of place. It does so much for making this game feel unique. 
For anyone worried about the early access status, let me tell you, since it first landed on Steam in October 2019, the game has been receiving an average of 2-3 to three updates per month. And not just tweaks, these are adding large amounts of content, plenty of balancing, as well as updating and polishing the character, UI designs, and more. The patch notes are always nice and detailed, clearly taking into account recommendations from the community, and in a totally unnecessary but very classy move. The developer has been attributing community changes to the user who specifically suggested it. Thomas has shown a willingness to adapt and improve the game, overhauling the map systems, how enemy and player contact is registered, subzones within larger areas, and at one point completely redoing huge sections of the art. There is no sign of slowing down and the early access here is really more of a benefit than anything else. Thomas is so clearly dedicated to making this game the best it can be, and getting in on the ground floor to watch that unfold and help it take shape is really something special. There's really no apparent risk of the game getting abandoned here. He is working on it full time right now. And as I said at the top of the video, if he stopped working on it tomorrow, you are still going to have dozens of hours of fun with this. Plus, at that entry price point of only $10, it's pretty hard to beat. For such a low investment, you're getting something that's better than the vast majority of other roguelikes out there, and you're investing in something that promises to only get better from here. Space Gladiators Escaping to Taurus borrows concepts, visuals, mechanics, and more from a myriad of different indie classics like The Binding of Isaac, Dead Cells, Hollow Knight, Rogue Legacy, and Behemoth games. I am personally extremely unforgiving of games that serve as nothing but an asset flip of whatever game they took inspiration from. I would always rather play the original than something lesser that fails to add to that concept or genre. Instead, Escaping Tataris has found a unique way to blend all those other elements together in a way that does feel unique. There is room for improvement, but this game is always improving. If Space Gladiators is a Frankenstein monster of other hacked together game parts, I would say it's definitely greater than the sum of those parts. You know, like a tall, confident, sexy Frankenstein. If you like any of those games I used to make comparisons, love action platformers, are in search of a new roguelike, are looking for something new and cheap, or just want to support a passionate and hardworking developer who is trying their best to break out, then please go play Space Gladiators Escaping Tars. Thank you to patrons of the channel, your support means so much, I love having the flexibility to make whatever kind of random content strikes my fancy. I know we just got an influx of new subscribers, so I want to say thank you and welcome. This is a variety channel, I know a lot of people are here for Undertale, there will be more of that, but there's going to be other stuff along the way. This is the third video I've done in this series. Now seems like a good time to take a step back and ask you guys what you think. Is this a helpful format for reviews? Would you rather I do it a little bit more traditionally? I don't know, I, I'm just genuinely curious about what kind of feedback you might have. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you again soon.